I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'll move on to roll call. I'll do roll call for us. Um, okay, thanks, Susie. All right. Chair Prochowski. Here. Uh, Wilbert Bobbs. Here. Vice Chair Hammond. Here. Charita Julieza. Here. Bruce Cantor. Here. Les Stansbury. Here. And Secretary Thompson. Here. Excellent. You have a quorum. Okay, great. Thank you. So we'll move on to uh, approval of the agenda. So um, we have the um, agenda here for Tuesday, September 15th, 2020. Everyone's had a chance to review it. And if there are any comments or adjustments, we'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda as it's written. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as written. Second. Those in favor? You need a roll call, Chairman. Yes. Okay. So. Petrowski? Here. Yeah, I. <laughs> Sorry. Bobs? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Elisa? Help me how to. <laughs> Sorry, aye. Cantor? Yes. Stansbury? Yes. And Thompson? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Item four. Hey, item four, approval of the meeting minutes for the regular meeting of July 17th, 2020, when we last met. Um, everyone's got a copy of the meeting minutes. If there are any questions or comments or points of discussion. Otherwise, we'll entertain a motion to approve the meeting minutes as they are written. I'll make a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes from July 17th, 2020. Second. Those in favor? Roll call. Yes. <laughs> All right. Petrovsky? Yes. Yes. Fox? Yes. Hammond? Yes. Julieza? Yes. Cantor? Yes. Stansbury? Yes. Thompson? Where'd you go? Oh, there you are. Okay. All right. Okay, so we'll move on to the public comment regarding items not listed on the agenda. If there is any uh, member of the public who would uh, like to comment at this time, uh, we'll entertain that. They'll, they'll need to raise their hand or, or what is it, uh, is it star six? If they can raise their hand or type their question in the chat room and I don't see any hands raised or chat room comments. Okay, well, then we will move on to the next item on the agenda, which is uh, new business. And I um, guess we will take these in order, ABC, although they're fairly similar in content and, um, and uh, analysis. So um, we'll begin with the site plan review for Laugh Field Investments uh, 27208. 60 Southfield Road. Uh, 
All right, you want me to just jump right in with these? Please, Jill. Okay. Um, first, a little bit of background for you, um, and Susie might need to help uh, chime in on this, and, and Scott, probably you also. Um, so back, I believe it was the end of last year, um, it was determined that there were some issues primarily with parking um, that was related to these facility, these three buildings. Um, and as part of the um, sort of the, the searching process and how do we deal with this process, it was determined that the original use for these buildings back when they were built, probably in the 60s sometime, um, was that they were largely professional offices. Um, they had no current site plans on file. Um, and so the first step in the process to figure out how to address the parking issues here is to get uh, some sort of site plans on file with the city um, and then try to identify solutions for the parking and or determine whether parking variances are in order. Um, the property changed hands at some point um, at the beginning of this year. And so the current property owner, we met with him back in February before the end of times, and um, we talked through all of this process and explained what the process would be, um, that really it's a matter of, of conveying what's happening on the property, what types of improvements are happening, and really just the current state of the properties as it is. Um, Susie or Scott, do you want to add anything to that? I, I think you've summed it up. Pretty well. Yeah, I think that's um, pretty accurate. Okay. Cool. All right. So um, essentially, the so they're similar properties, and yet there are some nuances between them. So, and I will apologize if I mix them up. I will try really hard to not do that. Um, the first one is twenty seven two zero six, and this one is um, the site between. Cambridge and Sunnybrook, right? So this is the south one on Southfield Road, south of City Hall. Um, okay. So you'll see that they're all roughly about the same size. Um, this parcel and the other, one of the other ones also has uh, the benefit of having some vacant land to the east. Um, that's undeveloped, it's zoned residential at the current time. Um, the interesting situation here is that a lot of the parking, um, not as much for this one, but certainly for the two in the north end, are um, in the Southfield Road right of way. So we've highlighted that. Um, and that is part of where some of the issues are with these sites. So we had gone back and forth um, just with some of the details about these, these properties. Um, we have a couple issues with the site plan, really primarily reflecting their provision for parking. And I'm sorry, if somebody could mute their microphone for a moment. It's hard to, it's, I get the feedback stuff. Um, thank you, sorry, that's just a weird thing I have. Um, so we have some of the parking that they're providing on site that they're showing they're providing on site, we can't really count it because either it's deficient in its dimension or it's deficient in its location. And those are noted on the plans. Um, there are some issues with that um, in terms of the number of spaces that are provided and required. And you'll see those highlighted in each of the review letters. Um, I think essentially the loading is satisfactory, the traffic and circulation are, are reasonable. Um, we do have issues with the dumpster. That was something that came up. Um, this one uh, for this property um, is located on the adjacent parcel um, and that's not permitted. Uh, so really in, in terms of the screening of that, we think that should be addressed. Um, the landscaping, I think it's, it's very difficult to upgrade for that at the moment, especially with the parking consideration. Um, and the screen wall situation, there are, this one has a, an existing fence along the east side lot line. Um, it's not compliant with its material or its location, but the applicant is not proposing to alter that at this time. That I think is an area which the planning commission might want to discuss, but um, I think the primary 
um, areas of uh, discussion would be surrounding the parking and the dumpster location and screening. Um, I don't know if there's any more detail. I don't know that there is necessarily, but I'm happy to answer questions about this particular site. Oh, uh, thanks, Jill. I was going to say, wasn't there, wasn't there an issue with um, repair of the, uh, the the alleyway in the back? Wasn't that suggested, and and the applicant wasn't wasn't going to do that? Um, I think it was Part C on it page. Three. Was, it was regarding the um, location of the alley. So I, I don't, and I don't know if maybe there was some misunderstanding from the applicant's perspective about what the, our first review letter was asking for. We were suggesting that if the applicant wanted to use the portion of the public alley um, for parking, that they ask council for approval to do so. Just like we've done in other instances in the city um, where the city has issued a license to utilize that public area. Um, so their response was that they weren't um, changing that in any way, which is fine, but it wasn't really the response that we were looking for. Jill, and, and, and I know we're, we're focusing on this one, but I think in one of the other analyses, there was a reference or, or at least a pointing out of the fact that if use of, of um, the, the, whether it be the public alley or the right of way or the, were, were being used to accommodate the parking in those areas that there was a requirement for maintenance to take on the maintenance of those, of those, uh, uh, areas of pavement, et cetera. Does that apply here as well? Yeah, that's what, that's what I was getting at, Mark. Yeah, yeah and trying. I think that would be included in any kind of a council approval or council um, license um, agreement okay. would be the maintenance of it, sure. And I had another, another point to just ask as, since it has maybe application to all three, but focusing on this one to start, um, since they have, um, residential property adjacent to them um, that's in ownership of the businesses, but it's not zoned the same as the businesses. Are there opportunities here for those areas to be considered or for a, a change of zoning and then to be able to apply um, or make up for deficiencies in parking on, on those properties? That's a really good question, and it seems like um, a really good example of how certain properties are are bound and constricted by um, the available parking they have on site because of the public right of way issue. Um, but currently, the city doesn't have any provision for that in the zoning ordinance. We've discussed it, um, so that would be something that the city would need to um, address in terms of allowing that and putting in some appropriate standards to do that. Okay. Now that would provide an avenue or potential avenue mm -hmm. to uh, achieve um, maybe not, if not compliance, at least an improvement in, in the uh, meeting parking requirements for, for the site, especially in, in light of the fact that uh, the properties are at risk for losing their parking uh, with the redevelopment of, of Southfield Road. So it seems like a path at least to, to, to look into. Um, I guess at this point, the question um, that remains in my mind is what will the city require of uh, an owner who is, um, while the, the occupancy of their building or at least the dynamics that affect the parking have changed and from the responses appear to uh, remain on the higher side, um, yet there aren't really proposed solutions to that other than leaving things as they are and then, then the occasional, well, the dumpster will remain even though it's not compliant. And, and um, you know, solutions to that might involve, well, forcing them to take that dumpster off of that and managing that in another manner um, by losing maybe even more parking and trying to incorporate it on the building side um, or uh, it appearing 
let's say on a side lot if there was even room but that's uh, that's getting into the right of way as well on the on the uh, on the um, residential streets um, are there I guess any other thoughts to for us to entertain here other than to uh, or maybe to provide some direction to city council about what needs to be thought about here. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what we have the power to act or try to enforce upon uh, an owner in this situation. Um, and so, um, yeah, like, wondering where we wanna take this. Um, I, I agree, Mark. So throughout, as I'm reading their responses, Jill, my question to you and Sri is, this guy, are there particular thresholds by which you review? You know, it's your second review and now they've responded. Are there particular thresholds in their response that would cause you to say, hey, you know, if you if you're really are unwilling to do this, I mean, that's, that's a sort of a deal breaker because it's, it's a non-compliant. Clearly there was a series of their responses that indicated to me that they had absolutely no uh, intention of, uh, any corrective actions, and it was through some of their responses. So is this a productive session for the commission to entertain uh, these reviews when indeed perhaps uh, it, it, there may not, it may not go anywhere if they don't comply to any of those, those things that you, you've asked for? Well, I think um, in terms of the parking, that was the, really the genesis of, of them coming in um, to see us and to come and see you um, because that needs to be addressed. So whether there was some opportunity to reconfigure some of the parking that they have on their site to see if there was a way to get more parking on their site. Um, that was one of their options. Um, we talked about uh, shared parking. We talked about is there an opportunity to share um, some of the spaces with other properties nearby that still would meet the requirements of the zoning ordinance. We talked about um, the flexibility of the tenant mix or lack of, or lack of flexibility. If there's only so much parking that you can't, you can only put so much into. What do they say? Uh, five. 10 pounds of sugar into a five pound bag. Um, you know, there's only so much you can put in there, right? So if you can't park it, there needs to be another alternative for that. And the, the property owner is, uh, it has responsibility to ensure that. Um, and that was what we were understanding initially was that there was a parking problem, at least on some of the, the properties. Um, so that was the, the, so the primary issue. So if they believe so that there's, that's as much as they can do, they are free to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals and ask for relief for the parking. Um, and then that'll be their, their case to prove with them that, that no, maybe that they would say, no, in fact, we don't have a parking problem. We know we're below the threshold, but we have these studies available to show you that, you know, at no point in time are we pe are park people parking on the street or we don't have enough parking, people are double parked, whatever it is. That's up to them to do that, but that's part of this whole process. I think, however, in terms of the dumpster situation and the trash, there needs to be some, um, Res uh, remedy for that. And I, I do think that that's something that the Planning Commission should see to it that it, that's addressed. Um, that's a standard that any of the businesses in the city would be required to adhere to. Um, and then other things, like I said, the landscaping, uh, the lighting, they're really not changing any of that. Um, and I don't think that's something that's necessarily um, primary issues we would go back and, and um, investigate on other properties. But I do think the parking and the, and the trash are rather important. Jill, can we? Just to add it? real quick, right now is kind of um, an ideal opportunity um, for them to consider or for you to consider um, if they're, if reconfiguring the parking lot may be um, a, a good solution. They, 
recently seal coated all three of those lots and none of them have been restriped at this point. So, I mean, now is a, a great time to, to consider what layout may be more appropriate or more conducive to um, meeting their tenants needs. I, so. Um, looking at, in response, uh, Susie, looking at the, uh, and I've got uh, the aerial view in front of me on, on, on my personal screen of the, uh, of the layout, uh, angle parking gets to be about as condensed or compressed as you can make it um, and accommodate uh, and to accommodate and maximize cars. So I'm not sure that there's a solution in and of itself that uh, um, will allow them, other, unless you start considering the size of your parking spaces. Um, and part well, of that- with this first one, they're already deficient in right. that back area. Right. Even and with the, them being angled, there's a couple of spaces that I think are only like 15 feet long. Right. Yeah, which is, which is why I, I kind of like the idea of, of us revisiting the, you know, the, the, the first property in, you know, we've talked about that, mm -hmm. I think twice over the last two years and we never moved forward on it. I, I personally, I've always liked that idea, that idea. Um, and this could be a possibility. It could be a solution, at least for the, the South building um to allow them to get more parking and it could be a you know kind of a precedent to you know for for other potential redevelopment purposes you know along the along the corridor so that maybe that's something we ought to look at i don't know how others feel right and and certainly at this point the the the, the width of those residential lots almost appears you know deliberate that they were never intended to be developed for residential i mean in and of themselves given given the widths um the They're the ship is not probably buildable. not buildable no right and so um and certainly it seems like the ship has passed on the time where the adjacent homeowners would have probably been able to or maybe even if there was a possibility of if they were interested in having it as their property um, and that certainly wouldn't serve the business district, um, even if, even if that were, I, I, you know, perceived as an opportunity to the business owner, which, you know, given the, the constraints we're dealing with, that's not a factor. Um, there might be an opportunity here. Um, I mean, it's not gonna, I mean, if, if the parking counts are deficient, um, even just a trade of parking space from from the right of way on Southfield Road to the back might be an improvement for the corridor, but it's it's not going to change numbers too dramatically. Um, in uh, you know, I could easily see maybe the row sh a row shifting to the adjacent properties, but they'd have to adhere to the setbacks there um, uh, from the residential property. Um, you know, if it's not established, you know, how we would establish it. And uh, I wouldn't just at a glance see that they'd be gaining much more there than what they would lose in the south field right away itself. So um, that, uh, uh, to that point, it, you know, that might be the difference when south field road is ultimately reconstructed and the difference between that building being at uh, a total loss or a taking versus that building remaining in existence. If Southfield takes away their right away, they lose their parking and if they, they don't have anywhere else to put those cars, then, then that property becomes property that uh, needs to be acquired as part of the project for the road. Um, I'm not sure what Bruce is doing, but <laughs> I was going to say, uh, it's, it's but, but this, and this is, this is a prime example. You know, we've talked about over the past several years on uh, multiple occasions, the parking as an accessory use in a residential district that's adjacent to a commercial property. Uh, this property, one of their other properties, uh, there are a couple other in the city that, that are, that would be prime for this. Um, you, you could create an ordinance in your, in your zoning ordinance that allows for that and, and specifies that uh, some of that uh, could also be used for, for a properly screened and enclosed dumpster. Um, Obviously, we'd have to make sure that they're, those aren't put right on the residential property line um, for obvious reasons, but uh, as Bruce is well aware, but um, 
you know, I think that's something that that's pro this right here, this property is a prime example of how that an ordinance like that could really benefit both the city and the property owner, um, you know, in moving forward with, with the Southfield Road redevelopment. I must say, looking at the reality of, of this, um, I mean, the arrangement as it is, if, if the, if the, and once again, I'm not, I don't have, I should probably just get the uh, floor plan in, or the site plan in front of me. But with the property line existing right through the center of the drive lane in front, uh, your, your parking would pretty much, assuming the you know, building footprint stayed the same and as it is right now, that you're, you're going to lose all your parking in front because you don't have a viable approach lane to get into the line, the, the, the line you have right in front of the, the building itself. So you'd end up in a situation where you're either putting in some close parallel parking, uh, you know, on one side with an, with an access and, uh, um, you know, just, just trying to imagine it. Um, and then you would certainly be dependent on the back area for getting more parking, but you're not, you're probably not going to achieve the quantities that, that, that they're, they're currently sustaining, um, in a manner that's not sanctioned. Um, I just pulled up our, the ordinance that we drafted back in 2018. Um, and I thought this was in there and it is. Um, the, one of the conditions for this, um, the second condition, the applicant shall demonstrate that substantial investment will be made into the redevelopment of the parcel, that the parking will serve and that ground floor uses in the redeveloped parcel will include retail, restaurant or residential uses. The architectural standards of the village center district shall apply. Um, so that that's how we had it drafted in 2018. I think that's worth considering. Um, maybe we explore that um, or provide some sort of a waiver um, allowance for the continuation of, of an existing structure. Um, but I do think that it is worth uh, maybe hearing from the applicant about their overall intentions for these buildings. Okay, we can entertain that at this time. If did you did you want to go through the other two, or I mean, they're they're pretty similar in terms of the they are. issue. We the should are the same. We should probably, I guess, just go. To take a walk through those and um, and just point out any nuances to each of them that um, you know is a different variation. I th I, th I think similar issues exist with all three. Mm -hmm. um, they do. Um, we have the same. The next one is the twenty eight six hundred um, and twenty eight six ninety between San Rosa and Avila. Um, this one also has the adjacent residential parcel. Um, we had similar issues with the parking alley or the parking in the alley, um, the parking space length, um, issues with overlapping the sidewalks. Um, again, the use of the alley would require some would require a license if they would like to use that. Um, otherwise, just hanging over parts of it aren't really that's not uh, meeting the code requirements. Um, and then again, the, in this case, um, the dumpster, there's a dumpster, but it's not compliant. And there's also a fence on the east side of the vacant lot. Um, and that's, it's a similar situation. Um, so we've just indicated if the applicant isn't interested in pursuing um, those standards, uh, compliance with those standards that variances would be required. And then the third one is 28820. And this 
one's the northmost site. This one's between Roseland and San Rosa. So this is just north of the other site. This one does not have the benefit of the uh, additional parking behind it. Um, again, our issues with the alley, although, um, and then the, the um, potential licensing of the alley and the non-compliant dumpster. The issues were the same really on all three sites, just the degree to which their uh, issues varied slightly. Is there, is there going to be any more conversation with the applicant from, from, your, from you all's perspective? Or once they gave you your oh. response, are they done? Well, well, it's up to you. It's for you to have a discussion with them now. Um, I mean, we certainly are available to be resources for them if they choose to pursue the variances. Um, we definitely will be here to help facilitate that as well. Um, we're always available to answer any other questions that they have. Jill, in, in, in looking through, you know, quote, past records, if there weren't past records or site plan approvals for, for this, which I think you indicated there's mm -hmm. nothing on record for it. Right. Um, has, have any of the deficiencies uh, or um, whether it be for parking or whether it be dumpster requirements or any of these issues um, come into being or can we, can we even tell whether they've come into being um, with um, any changes in the master plan or um, designations of the zonings for these for these sites? Uh. Well, without knowing when exactly they were built and under what standards, um, I would guess that probably parking has changed since the original um, buildings were built. Um, and likely the utilization of the Southfield Road right-of-way. Um, I don't know how that was permitted originally, um, only we know that now we can't count that area as parking for the parking requirements. Right, right. Just, I guess, putting some emphasis on the point of, given how tightly developed these sites are, it, it would appear to me that there was some acceptance in the past uh, for that dense uh, development and allowance um, to begin with. So I don't know whether there's a, uh, a legal factor there in any of the decisions that get made or if, there's, if that carries any weight with, you know, um, I guess taking a balanced approach in how we might, uh, um, you know, direct the current owners. So the issues with the right-of-way parking um, are that the city doesn't own the right-of-way and that right-of-way is subject to change. So the uses have been continuing for some time, but apparently even with that, there's been issues in terms of the number of users on site and identifying um, adequate parking for those facilities. Right, and there's no past records or at least that the city has I'll say maintained, and I don't know this, it's just from what's available to us at this point, um, you know, how those were developed originally, what the history was, whether parking was added at some point, whether the buildings were constructed with, with uh, less and maybe they needed less, and if anything was, was um, modified along the way. Um, you know, we're a good uh, 60 years later approximately from when many of these were, were likely constructed. So again, some of the things that we did discuss with the applicant um, earlier this year were um, the recalculation of the tenant mix to maximize the number of spaces they do have on site. Uh, minimize some of the conflicts, um, look at shared parking, 
um, and then also try to demonstrate that the parking isn't uh, a problem. And that would be part of their uh, request for a variance for those properties. Has there been re the, the, the reference to the parking or in the perception of parking issues, has this been, um, has this come from the property owners or the previous property owners? Has it come from the local, the residents around those locations or um, can you share a little bit more about what the impetus was just? Well, it's, it's mostly, and Scott, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's mostly in the northernmost building um, and that was actually the impetus of, of the, you know, uh, uh, parking order that we, we put in place recently because there, there were issues with overflow parking and those people parking on the residential streets. Um, and then people weren't able to get their mail because the post office wouldn't deliver if there was a car in front of the, the mailbox. Um, there were issues with noise and people matriculating at two o'clock in the morning. Um, and so forth. So it was it was really you know coming I think mostly from the residents complaints from the residents. That's accurate. And, and in addition to that, there were uh, the previous owner made significant modifications to the existing structure without uh, necessary permits, approvals, um, variance requests. Uh, so the the capacity for those buildings has, has dramatically changed from when they were initially design. Unfortunately, we don't have the original, any of the original documentation from when those properties were constructed, but um, just going in there, it's, it's very evident that the modifications were done um, by, by not, I'm not sure who did them, but they probably weren't uh, licensed to do it, and they weren't, certainly weren't done up to code. So there's, there's some issues with that as well on, on some of uh, the northern property, I think uh, the one to the south of that as well. Like the, I know looking at the uh, the plans and noting that they're split level and uh, lots of uh, lots of smaller spaces, um, public bathrooms scattered here and there or paired here and there of varying sizes. Um, no no detail there in terms of compliance with uh, you know barrier free requirements or if any of those sorts of upgrades have been you know made over time. Um, and or whether they would would have been required based on you know changes that might have been made, um, but uh, um, obviously there's some just general infrastructure issues from from a business standpoint of being able to accommodate. And I and I it's not something I've studied or been involved with too much recently in my professional career as an architect, but um, but it's just. Um, when, when modifications are made, usually the code has you making updates for things like that. And, um, you know, the, the, there might be some ingrained structural issues just with, with access and having to go up a level or, or down a half level and up a half level to, uh, um, to get the floors. But that's really a separate issue and, and, and not necessarily under our jurisdiction, but, but something that would really need to be considered, I suppose, if there was some wholesale um, gutting and, and rework of those spaces, you know, what would be required? Um, and that would be an issue for the city's code official to uh, potentially advise on if it's not the professional, the architect representing the owner, so. Jill? Yes. Oh, perfect. I know there were some questions uh, the board had asked. I'm still getting used to the Zoom hearings. Uh, this is kind of my first one. Uh, usually I'm in person. So thank you very much, uh, everyone, for uh, uh, having us tonight. I um, am on behalf of the applicant, Jason Curris. Uh, there are some other folks, I can't see them on the screen, that we brought along, our architects and some other folks from our office. A gentleman who's running the buildings right now and um, one of our attorneys as well. I can't see them on the screen, but uh, normally they come to us to all of our uh, planning commission meetings. But I think there was a question as to what was our intent with the buildings. First and foremost, we couldn't be more excited to be a part of Lathrop Village. I think that the corridor is an amazing corridor. Uh, while it's got its challenges, including these buildings, uh, there is a deep history here 
a lot of the issues and concerns from the very first meeting with Susie and Jill was that we inherited um, some known things. We inherited a lot of unknown things with these buildings. We recently uh, had the inspectors in for, I guess, the first time in four or five years, which uh, was what they kind of had indicated. They had not fully gone to the extent of the inspection detail as they did with us. Uh, we've received a list of, of concerns and issues. I know, Scott, you had mentioned that uh, there was work done, uh, which does not surprise me, uh, over the years without permits. Um, and so our intent on every building that's there is what we have seen and discovered is that there is a need for these small business type of users, which in speaking with Jill and Susie has prompted this planning commission review for a, um, I guess, a site plan review, which was never done. Um, when we pulled the numbers and we looked at everything, we noticed that even if it was an office use, many of the features of this building is out of use, uh, is non-compliant, is non-conforming. And that's if we leased it as office space. We are substantially deficient on parking, whether it is office, which was what the original intent was, based upon the right-of-way parking, every property is at least 30 to 40 spaces short, even from an office standpoint. We feel, and we're hopefully going to uh, submit that to the Zoning Board of Appeals, we will need to request variances for parking. Um, that is something that we just can't do anything about. We can't add more property. Um, I would love to get more of Southfield, but obviously with the right-of-way, we cannot do that on any of them. The rear lots, as it was mentioned, we also looked into um, paving out to see how many more spaces we could get and whether that satisfied the variance. So what I think is going to happen is that we are going item by item and looking for the least amount of variances that we have to request, but I think it's going to come down to parking on the majority of, of all the variances for the three properties that we need. So paving those back lots still puts us under the minimum requirement, uh, even if this was an office building, strictly an office building. What we found is that we actually think the parking's improved since our ownership. Now, granted, when we first bought it at the end of January, no one envisioned the world ending in March. And so we are really now getting kickstarted into cleaning these buildings up. And we have been filing the requested paperwork to register them. We wanted to get in front of you. And I have to apologize. Um, when we reviewed the first uh, site review from Jill, we just wanted to make sure that we came prepared and that we could answer any questions that you may have for us. And so that's why it got postponed. So I know that we did have a meeting. We asked for an adjournment. We wanted to make sure that we could answer, satisfy many more questions that we had on what the city was looking for, the planning commission might be looking for, and that way we could tell everybody what our intentions are. As far as an office use, what we've seen is that most office use, the cars are there all day, they may leave for lunch, um, and we have other uh, buildings that we own that are office, there's not as much transient parking. With the use changing to a little bit more of a retail and office and mixed use type of businesses that are there, the traffic comes and goes a lot faster. As far as the problems at night, we are hoping to clean those up, Bruce. I know you'd mentioned that the neighbors had issues. Uh, we've tried to, truthfully, we clean these buildings out. Uh, when we took them over, there was trouble. And we, they would have been cleaned up a lot faster, but again, things have been shut down. So really June, middle of June, was kind of when we were able to jumpstart, find out who actually was there, a lot of folks were, were squatting. We had to get them out of there. Uh, we noticed some folks trying to do things they weren't supposed to. We, we re-secured the doors. We got, uh, you know, we, we upgraded our management. We got different cleaning crews and janitorial. And so far, it seemed to change. As far as dumpsters, I know there was an issue with trash. Um, and we blatantly, every time we got a picture from uh, Jim, we'd sent it over to waste management. Uh, there, I'm sure with most cities or even private businesses, there was issues with the dumpster companies picking up the dumpsters on time during and a little bit after COVID because a lot of their folks were off. Um, 
And so our plan right now is we are trying to tackle the many issues that have occurred at these buildings over the years. We have a sheet uh, that we received a, a very detailed report on items that are need immediate attention, which we are actually having another call um, with the city on Thursday to try and talk about a timeline. From a development standpoint, the bones and the structures of these buildings are fabulous. There may be some improper plumbing that was done. We are tracking. Uh, there may be some uh, heating and cooling that needs uh, replacing because who knows who touched it. We are addressing all of these things from a property management standpoint. From a uh, use standpoint, we really feel that the highest and best use is this mixed use. Some of the folks, unfortunately, cannot necessarily afford the premier shopping centers in the area. And they are folks that want to not operate their businesses out of their homes. They may be artists. Um, they may be photographers. Uh, they may want to rent small office space. And they can't afford going to a shopping center. And so this gives them an opportunity to start business 101. And we do not have leases there. So from a standpoint of clearing and cleaning a building out, everyone that's on site is a licensee. That means that they are a month to month party that we license the space to. And if for some reason they violate our rules and regulations or there's an issue, we, there's different laws that apply to us than an eviction proceeding, which also has been a challenge through this, the pandemic. So we've set it up to make sure that if folks want to uh, have an office for photography or they want to uh, have a, a barber or a beauty um, and they want to sell jewelry or some clothing stores in here or their real estate offices, we cater to everybody. Uh, and we have encouraged everybody not only to make sure they register with Lathrop Village, but to make sure that they get their business licenses and to do everything that they can. We are working because these buildings did not get like this overnight. So all I ask, and I'm going to ask the same thing from the zoning board, is just give us a little bit of time. You know, our ultimate plan is to fill these up. We've already done substantial work as far as even replacing lights from regular to LED. We had to drop new service. Apparently the previous owner was tying different buildings in with electric meters. And so we recently got DTE to come out and update it. And so there's a lot of things that we're discovering that we would fix on our own, but we appreciate the help and courtesy of the building department to say, hey, look, what about this? What about that? We want to make sure that we get everything certified. And so we encourage and appreciate any feedback. What we're really looking for is an approval of the existing site plan that was submitted, pending variances that are needed that we can't do anything about because there's just no, no more land to buy. And so when our architect put together all three site plans, we put them together as an as-built site plan. We didn't change anything. So what you see is what you get. And we already know from speaking with Jill that there are many non-conforming pre-existing conditions there that we can't change, that were non-conforming before we bought it, they'll be non-conforming for years to come. And parking is the major issue. So there was never a variance done before. Jill recommended that we needed to start with site plan, get the planning commission to approve what's here, pending going back to zoning and getting variances for some of the items that we are gonna need variances for. Parking really is, is the major one. But I do think if we get in front of the BZA, uh, in addition to a lot of the other sites that I do believe are deficient also on Southfield Road due to the right of way, that we can prove and show not only have we cleaned and are cleaning the buildings up, but I think that the mixed use actually eliminates more of the office parking that was originally the concept back when these buildings were done. As far as Mark, you'd asked about the conditions with ADA, we didn't touch any of the existing bathrooms. Those are the existing bathrooms you know, um, if we are going to remodel them, obviously, we've talked to our architects about potentially seeing how we can incorporate any of the ADA components. But again, unfortunately, with the dual stairs going up and down, um, it's very challenging to, to bring it to today's standards without effectively dropping an elevator in or demolishing it and starting over. And so we're just kind of working with what we have. We want to make it the best that we can make it, clean it up for the corridor, and, you know, again, any, any recommendations from the Planning Commission, we'd love to hear. But I just wanted everyone to hear our plan was to bring in proper businesses, 
proper folks who get licensed, proper folks who pay their business license, proper folks who pay their personal property taxes when they're here. And when the folks are actually registering and doing it the right way, we hope that they're gonna be here to stay. They're not a fly by night, let's go open up tomorrow and move out the next day. But we have precautions to make sure that if somebody is not doing something appropriate, that we can get somebody out of the building quickly versus long-term 10, 15, 20 year leases with folks. So that's our plan for all three of the buildings. We've gotten tremendous phone calls. We think it's a great corridor, um, but we've got a ways to go and we wanna clean it up together with the city. That's great. This is Jason Hammond speaking. Um, you guys hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Um, so Jason, thanks for conveying all that information. It's uh, really uh, great to hear the plans and the intent. It's, uh, the intent wasn't really uh, described well, I would say, in the written response to the site review uh, from Giffels Webster. Um, it kind of read like, well, we're not planning to change anything. <laughs> and that was kind of it, right? So the fact that you guys are open to um, at least considering change, right, and getting feedback and uh, trying to make improvements as are appropriate and possible and reasonable is uh, nice to hear. Uh, my, 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 my feeling is that just because things have been uh, the way they have been and kind of non-conforming and, in, and potentially incorrect or, you know, uh, challenging all along uh, for many years, you know, since before now, to me, that's not a reason why to keep things as they are. Um, I don't, I don't feel like uh, we have to, I, I'm not saying right now that I would be not in favor of approving the site plan review with the provisions of uh, variances that you would need to request and get approval for. But, but um, I, I also don't feel like just uh, using the reasoning that, well, they, they, they've been, you know, non-conforming, these buildings have been non-conforming for some period of time. Um, and we're not planning to change anything at this point is a, uh, a reason to approve a site plan as is. Yeah, I'm curious, I'm, I'm curious how everybody else on the Planning Commission feels about that. I, I would say, Jason, that I've been wrestling with this myself as far as what's, what, what to, you know, acknowledgement of hardship acknowledgement of constraint in the existing conditions and 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 what um what manner of precedent do we have i mean precedent is is a concern in terms of whatever our decisions would be to help encourage bringing something into compliance i mean there's legal process through variance which might you know just be the process of accepting uh at least certain deficiencies namely Parking is the big one right now, but that's somewhat a kicking a can down the road um, with the constraint of what happens when Southfield Road gets expanded and they lose so their right of way or lo lose a portion of it. So you're going to lose your parking, um, which is why I was discussing the, the concept, which really doesn't apply to the northernmost property, but it, with the adjacent residential property, is there an avenue to look at planning for the future um, and Lathrop has been kind of waiting for that continuously for that future to get here in terms of that uh, the redevelopment of, of, of Southfield Road. Um, but finding trying to find an avenue for assisting the properties to remain viable um, with uh, with the business, maybe with the business structure that you're proposing or that's that's currently in existence, um, but but also not necessarily propagating problems that uh, uh, or deficiencies that have been going on for some time. Yeah, I guess, you know, just to buy on that, and Charo, I can see that you have something you want to say in a second. Um, I, I, we got to work with you guys to figure out a way to move the ball down the field in a way that is sustainable for years to come, just to kind of summarize what Mark was saying, right? The, we know the parking situation is not going to get any better, right? It's just a fact, right? Uh, we been, They've been talking, Oakland County's been talking for a long time about uh, expanding Southfield Road, and one day or another, 
that's mm. more than likely going to happen and it's going to steal some of the parking that you guys have along the Southfield Road. So we need to pre prepare for that and we need to find some solutions that we can work on together. So I think, I guess, you know, whatever resistance you might be feeling from, at least from me personally, is not about uh, an unwillingness to, to work with you guys to find a solution. I just don't feel like we have a good solution on the table in front of us this very day, right? But we need to continue to have that conversation and work on it. Ms. Carl, you're gonna add something? Yeah, well, it is indeed finding the balance. We, you know, I believe we have someone here who wants to make improvements in these properties. So I wonder, Jill, uh, with the parking, obviously variances, because that, that is one where we have great uncertainty now and even in the near future. So variance is the pathway to, to that issue. But are there other priorities? Might we imagine a, a series of priorities where we say, okay, beyond parking, what are the next set of um, issues that we would really want to discuss uh, with, with um, these folks and to prioritize that and say, this is really important to us and, and we would like to work with you and say, if, even if, if you do not have immediate plans to tackle this now, is there some sort of schedule that we can, we can come up with to say, you know, could we then work on this? Okay, after that, when, what is the next uh, most important issue? And maybe that would be a way by which we uh, incrementally deal with these, these, these issues. Because I can, I can understand that Jason wants to proceed in, you know, and uh, all that, all of that. But at the same time, we, we, care about uh, all of these other issues that, that affects, you know, those areas and, and the neighbors. So it's, might that be something, Jason, that you would work with us uh, in creating some sort of schedule or some sort of a timeline where we can prioritize uh, those issues that we can agree upon that would be remediated, for instance, that you would say, would you express areas or would you look at some of your responses given that now you've, you've listened to us and say, are there areas where you might reconsider a different response? In regards to the site plan review, Charles, or I think there's two things. One, there is the existing building conditions that we are working on currently with the city. Uh, we have folks in these buildings. We have to make sure that everything is up to snuff. These are not empty buildings um, and we're, we don't plan on keeping them empty. We'd like to bring the businesses into Lather Village because um, I do know that those folks eat and shop and when they're not working, they may run across the street to go get something. So we wanna bring these businesses and keep them here. Being that said, from a planning commission standpoint, um, I know Mark has had uh, a couple comments as far as you know, what, where do we go? What can we do with it? Um, I'd like to know what other immediate items you have. I've looked through all of these. Um, you know, Parking was the major one. The dumpster corrals or lack thereof um, and then the rear parking, which uh, is in the residential lots, I think that's a different matter. As far as a matter of procedure, um, I'd love to change my responses. The issue I think that I have on the parking at a minimum is that I have to, by law, go to the, the zone of boarding appeals. Um, I'd love for you guys to be able to grant that to me, but I know that I have to go ask for that. I don't know how I can get more parking. The landscape, as Jill has mentioned, I'd love to rip out some of the concrete and beautify it with new landscaping. The problem then is, is I'd be going for an increased variance in parking. So I only have this piece of art that I can work with. And if I, if I take something else and maybe we do um, more site lighting or maybe we do additional landscaping, then I'm only gonna further cut our parking which then would be a bigger variance. 
So what my goal is, is to figure out out of all of these things in Jill's review, how can I try and accommodate and get the site plan approved with the least amount of variances that I have to from a planning commission standpoint. And the other facet is, is these buildings in Jason, I, um, I love um, when we've got folks that are interactive with me, especially in the planning commission. I know there's no resistance. You guys have been wonderful. Um, Susie's been wonderful. Jill's been wonderful just to be able to sit down and have a conversation before we get here. Uh, Cause a lot of times cities don't do that. And so what I want to try and do is preserve and protect the businesses that want to be here with a building that's from the sixties that I know I need to make improvements on. Now, when I spoke with Jill, do I, I'm going to be tackling things one off on a checklist either way. And that could be simply making sure that the plumbing's not leaking. So there is a facet of management issues that I need to attend to. Then there's the facet of, you know, let's say wishes. I have the needs and I have the wants. And I want to do a lot of things with these, but I need to get the needs done. In the same token, I was told from Susie early on that we need to get these things in compliance. That is a that is a need of the city is to get these buildings at least in compliance. If I can't get them in compliance through planning commission, then maybe the board of zoning appeals will grant variances that will then put me in compliance, even though it's a non-conforming compliance pre-existing, at least I'll be in compliance. Then we can work on the future of potentially rezoning the back parking lots. If we can do all of it in one swoop, I'd love to do that, but I just don't know if that's a possibility. If there's other items, uh, Charles, that you're thinking of outside of the site plan review, um, I know we answered them. Uh, I guess we responded to them with my architect, Marsha. I don't know if she's on the line. You know, she did the responses yeah. uh, with us, but we responded um, knowing truthfully that we were probably going to be headed to BZA because we just couldn't fulfill the requirements by code today. So if there was something specific, uh, maybe I can address it, but I know you'd ask for a timeline. I think we have so far uh, gone down the timeline verbally that we've discussed with Susie and Jill, and we're going to continue to do that. Um, I always hate to, uh, I always like to undercommit, over deliver for any city that we do work in. But if there is uh, something specifically I can address on the, on the plan review, I'd, I'd love to do it. But I know we wanted to go item by item, and it seems to me the biggest issues here, Jill, when you wrote this up and when our architects were talking was really the parking, which we already know there's deficient no matter what. It's deficient today, period. And we got to get around that. We got to get a variance because none was ever granted ever, or it would be on the title work, and we never pulled it when we bought it. And then the other big issue was uh, the alley's simple. Uh, we can change the parking. Um, I apologize because we spoke with our architects before this meeting, but we can fix some of the items uh, as it relates to public alley, parking in the rear. We can make it parallel parking. We're already going in for a variance. We're just going to go in for a larger one. As far as on the dumpsters, um, you know, a couple things Jill requested, bollards and such. Um, and some of those dumpsters sit on the residential property. So, you know, we've got a couple of hurdles we got to tackle. Either we can leave the dumpsters there and the zoning board will grant it, and then we can go in the process of rezoning it. But if we move the dumpster over again to the other properties, we're going to be eliminating even more parking. So again, it's, it's the greater of two evils. I'm trying to figure out what we can do um, in order to, to not have as big of a variance or as much of a variance. So um, again, any, any comments or suggestions, you know, uh, I, I'm open to it. I want to work with the city. I want to make sure that these things are brought into compliance and there's really two levels of compliance. There's your compliance and the zoning compliance, and then there's the building department compliance. So, you know, we've definitely got, uh, we've bitten off a lot. We're trying to work with, um, all the different departments, but, um, from a, from a planning standpoint, we just need what's existing. What I'm hoping for is you know through your approval whatever's existing here pending the items that the planning commission uh, would need a variance on that they approve the existing site plan because it's an existing building and obviously the interior and the makeup we're working on that but the site plan itself has not changed the inside may have been reconfigured but the exterior the concrete the shrubbery 
nothing has really changed. We're looking for a, a approval on the existing site plan pending the items that Jill has requested and noted that we need to go to BZA on so that we can go in front of them and ask for them to allow a variance. Jason, this is Les Stansberry. I've just got a quick question for you. What is the hesitance in bringing the dumpsters up to compliance? In the site, in the, in the screen wall? As, so a res issue, as, a, as a resident, I would want all the dumpsters to be in compliance. You're going to have the issue with parking regardless. So you're going to have to get a, a variance for that regardless. Even if you lose a part, a spot for the dumpster, you still got to get a variance. But it doesn't mean you can't bring the, the dumpster into compliance. So the issue with that, Les, is that, and the question really is, do we bring it into compliance on the residential lot that they may make us, they may not give us a variance, so then we bring it into compliance to tear it up? Or do we bring it into compliance and move it prior to the fact that maybe they will rezone those residential lots? And instead of us spending all the money to move all of that, we can spend the money to pave it out, stripe it, and eliminate your long-term future problems. So it's a matter of what is the best maneuver in order to maximize these properties. And we want to bring it into compliance. The only reason we didn't do this was there was no talk on this plan review about a potential rezoning of the residential lots, because if we knew they get rezoned, we'd agree to bring them into compliance. What I don't want to do is throw good money toward bad. So I don't want to bring and spend $10,000 and put bollards and concrete and, and screen walls. And then all of a sudden they, they say, it's not going to fit. It's a residential lot. And now we got to dig it all up and move it over to the other side. So the only thing we're waiting on is, what can we do with the back? What are we allowed to do with the back? If we are going to go in with the position of let's rezone that, which I'm all for, and let's pave that out. Let's get the you know setbacks and everything else. Then it does make sense to start improving that from a screen wall standpoint and from a dumpster standpoint. I just need to know which direction to go in. And I can't do anything right now until I know one, how the planning commission is going to, um, I guess, approve or not approve. But even if they approve with conditions of a potential rezoning, Charles, I think you're looking for some type of plan. Maybe there can be an approval of a potential future meeting of a rezone. And maybe it could be the next meeting after I come back from BZA, if need be, with approvals on some of the variances. But if I know that we can rezone that lot, then we can update our plans and we'll bring everything into compliance with that dumpster. So that's the only, there's no hesitation less. I just don't want to, put good money at bad if we're going to end up having to move that dumpster anyway, if they don't rezone the, the lot and it stays residential. So, so Jason, you're basically saying you, you, you want to be clear on what the best path option is available for you to, to um, achieve compliance or at least improve compliance to a, to a, or move it to a higher level. Um, um, without getting into the path of fix for fix sake, um, you know, putting band-aids to try to um, maybe avoid variances, but maybe you avoid, avoid one variance and you enhance another um, by parking. Uh, 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 yeah, that, that's, that's part of that strategy of what is that path what 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 should that path be and what does this commission feel is is you know an appropriate thing to do to promote business and yet to maybe improve business i i liked what you were saying with reference to the the people you have coming and going and bringing population to to the business corridor which is a positive thing especially if it supports local businesses um and uh, I mean, that's, that's part of the goal. So it's like, we've got this high density um, or in density that's higher than the, the, the lot is allowing us to uh, accommodate, at least f from a standpoint of, of parking at this point. So that's, that's certainly an issue that uh, um, uh, has been a, a, a point of discussion 
on various fronts of how to deal with parking when people come. And here we have a situation where people have come and we we have this 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 parking issue. At the same time, you're also working on what I assume assume are are, are there's that sweet spot of um, where the facilities are, their location, and maybe the grade of those facilities to be able to be affordable to create that draw. Um, and then from a business standpoint, I would, su I would suspect uh, the balance of how much do you have to put in versus how much, you know, the owners are able to, to, to get out of that property. And, 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 and we want to make sure that balance serves the city as well as, as well as the business owners. So, um, but uh, I guess those were my comments. So I guess I, this is a question to Jill and uh, Susie and, um, and maybe Cheryl. So I'm still trying to understand if there's some sort of temporal or sequence. Is, is it that Jason has to secure uh, the variance first or is it, is it, is this all has to be strictly sequential in other words he has to have the commission's you know blessings before he proceeds with in pursuing the variances and then does it come back or where are there i think what we're all talking about here is jason not jason happen jason is are there areas here that we can identify where you jason your businesses can offer up a bit you know to to goodwill to to uh, make sure that you are perhaps on on a pathway to compliance on some of these things we want to we want to support businesses that are really trying to build the business here yes we understand positive externalities and it induced effect of economic impact analysis got it we get it that's really important especially now but I think it's just, you know, striking the balance here. And I'm trying to understand from Susie and Jill as to what the sequence of steps are now for Jason. Does he pursue the, uh, the variance first or, or is it that he can't do that without, you know, the commission's um, blessings or whatever that might be? Really, really, he could go about it either way. He could he could request the variances. Uh, this this approval could get tabled until he has the variances, or if planning commission is inclined to improve these these site plans as built, subject to the condition that he obtain the requisite variances. That's one way to move it forward. So, like one of many ways to move it forward, I guess. Then my question to the commission is: is are are there one or two of these issues that you would hold in priority that we would want to advocate for. I think less, for instance, uh, mentioned the, the, the dumpsters and whatever. Are there other priorities with the members? And some of the things, if I can, just to sort of go back to our original conversations with Jason and his team back in February. Um, like he said, we were, are, continue to be very supportive of um, his rehabilitation of these three buildings. Um, we really like the idea that he's bringing in people with entre entrepreneurial spirits um, and the hope was uh, is that that folks would get started here and then hopefully spread out and move out into other um, bigger spaces um, with more prominence for them to grow businesses in Lathrop Village. Um, but we recognize too the limits, you know, there's only so many resources available. Uh, we know that the exterior of these buildings is rough and there's some issues with uh, some of the those areas, but then the insides are also rough too. And, and trying to work with Jason on, um, you know, understanding what the overall end goal for these buildings is, is it just, um, you know, to maintain what we have or is it to really enhance uh, and make these three properties stand out in the district in some way? Um, I think, you know, the, the 
the primary impetus again behind the whole pro the whole uh, process was to address the parking. And we know that it's it's in some ways it is what it is, right? Um, but the, it may be that they we can't use all 24,000 square feet of building. Um, if we're going to start talking about uh, phasing, maybe that is a place to start. Um, I, I think it's about trying to solve the problem. It's not just about saying, well, you only have 20 spaces available. We're going to give you a variance for the rest. If parking's a problem, we got to figure out the solution. So either it's we reduce the building in some way, we find parking someplace else, we find other places to do the parking, um, and then maybe some of it is on the city to find some other ways to help other property owners uh, along the corridor with the same issue um, in terms of, though, what we really thought about adding that parking behind was to see the redevelopment of the corridor, to see some real significant investment um, that would make it more palatable for the residents, quite honestly, to um, who are not going to be super excited about this. We know that. Um, but if we're seeing some redevelopment of properties and some enhancement of the corridor um, and with the proper screening, like we talked about, that's something that they're seeing in other communities and it should be something that they can accept here. So at this point, what constraints are there? I mean, if, if this, uh, let's just ask the question, if, uh, if, we, if the if the commission does not approve a site plan as it is, what status does that leave Jason in? Well, the status is that the buildings are um, out of compliance because they don't have a, a site plan on file with the city. Okay, so they have to get an approved site plan in order for them to be occupied to be perfectly blunt. Is that a true statement? Yeah, they need they need to have approved site plans, as we mentioned earlier, given the, the modifications that have been made, the, the increase in the, the density of, of the tenants and the, and the parking issues. If they don't, uh, then I guess if, under our zoning ordinance that so they would become, become a, a nuisance property and, and potentially subject to abatement. Um, but I mean, the goal of the city is, is obviously to work with them. Uh, you know, having vacant properties is not, is not our objective. Uh, we we want to see, we want to see Jason do well. We want to see these businesses do well. We want, we want that for our community. So it's um, like Jill has said, it's, it's something that, um, it's more than just getting a variance to it's, it's finding a solution to the problem. And, and unfortunately with the potential, well, the inevitable, whatever it may happen, expansion of Southfield road is only going to exacerbate that problem. So, um, you know, putting a bandaid on it right now, while that may fix it, uh, we might be back in this situation in five years, or, or as I mentioned earlier, uh, the road commission may make a determination that all right. Well, these properties need to be need to be acquired as part of the uh, redevelopment of Southfield Road, and and then now we have vacant properties with uh, inadequate parking and um, you know issues there that need to be addressed. So it's really it's in the best interest of everybody involved to come up with um, an appropriate solution now while we while we have that opportunity and, and, and you know utilizing. Uh, the situation right now with a lot of these businesses are closed. Uh, they're not open to the public. So it's a good opportunity to, to get some of these issues resolved that, that are, you know, some of the lower hanging fruit and, you know, maybe it's focusing on one property at a time, but um, you know, I think that's something that, that the city can work with, you know, uh, the property owner and the architects to, to accomplish those goals. Right. I guess uh, in part, I'm in trying to envision, you, you make the improvements, you make the, uh, if you say the variances, you even change, the, you know, if you change the zoning to partially help sustain the current business model, the current business plan for those properties, that may have its, its, its you know, lifespan too. And that may be very short once 
once uh, Southfield Road gets redeveloped or gets um, rebuilt. Um, so then it becomes, well, does that mean it's just a change into a new business model and maybe those properties will have to sustain something that's not, doesn't have the density that it has right now uh, without, you know, say the immediacy of parking. If we came up with a scheme that went down the road and said, okay, here's the public parking structure lot for the city, would it support the business in its current form. Um, and I'm not sure that I would be convinced that it would at this point. Um, that, I mean, I'm, I'm talking on a, on a much higher level here because there are higher, higher level issues um, beyond um, the, the function that that's proposed and that it's serving currently as almost like a business, a small business incubator, which is something that's been talked about for uh, a potential solution for the Annie Lathrop School in which we would like to get populated in a, in a probably uh, similarly dense manner um, with, uh, you know, with all the positive positivity and, and, and public um, recognition of a successful venture that we would like to make of that. Um, so this is happening in a, in a, in a, in properties that are uh, maybe perceived as less desirable architecturally, less desirable, um, uh, maybe even location wise. Uh, but um, yeah, I guess I'm just wrestling with, with uh, where do we, where do we take this? Um, so the, the, the yeah. go ahead. Um, it, it seems to me that, you know, we, we don't have the most elegant solutions right now because there's a, a, a series of complexity and a lot of uncertainty. But there's such a simplicity at what a decision we could make right now is to, to not approve it and we're back and we might, it, these buildings might get worse. We lose tenants, we lose businesses. And to me, that's unpalatable. I would rather work with someone, approve something and have the uncertainty of whether all of my ducks are gonna be, you know, all of these compliance are gonna be met. Because at some point we are moving forward. There's a forward momentum here. There's someone who wants to improve, albeit it might not be, you know, our ideal improvement, but you know, it, it's sort of the, you know, I, I hate to say it, we can't be choosers right now. So that's, and, and and yes, Jason, I'm saying that, but uh, we've been down these, this road before where we have indeed denied uh, approvals and, and we have stopped some forward momentum. And so I, for me, I would wish to just move forward with something. It might be incremental and it might not be the most elegant solution right now, but at least there's someone who's trying to improve that and perhaps that in itself, there'll be some sort of ripple effect, you know, the economic impact analysis, right, Jason? And per perhaps it will, it will be the, the thing that perhaps might keep things going. So, I, and, and I think Scott uh, drove that, uh, that point to me is that what happens if we don't approve it? And, I, and I'm not saying that we are backed in a corner. What, what does one have to lose here? Right, I, I, and I would agree. We, we were, we're, 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 we're speaking with a, um, Jason has emphasized that they're in the process of making the improvements on the interior of the building, trying to bring those things up to speed and up to code and into compliance. So there's improvement in the property as it is. And, and, and uh, I kind of see things the same way, Charles, that there's this incremental process to evolution of the corridor. <laughs> and it's not gonna go from um, uh, rags to, to riches overnight, nor, you know, it has to take these steps. So when I started out with the 
what avenues do we have to start accommodating parking in the uh, adjacent residential lots and, and, and a change of zoning to achieve it or some other structure to achieve or to allow it to occur on those sites. Um, um, now seems to be the time. Well, and we can certainly bring that language back to you very easily next month. Um, it's already written, so we um, can have a go with that again. Um, you know, we really wrote, I wrote the letters um, based on, I think, the areas in which we felt there was the most, um, I guess, timely or significant um, issues. And that really involved the parking and then the, you know, landscaping, like Jason said, it, it, there's really very limited opportunity to do anything. There's some in the islands in the right of way, and but it's a trade off, right? We, we know parking is the issue, so we can't really handle the landscaping. Um, I agree with Les that the trash is something that's really important. You can have, uh, you know, buildings that are from the 60s, but, and that's, you know, they are what they are, but when you have trash outside your dumpster or outside your building, that's sending the wrong message, right, for the whole community. Um, so those were the two areas in which we really highlighted. Um, and, and the response from the applicant is satisfactory. If they want to pursue the variance, that's fine. Um, and that's the way we wrote the letter. So I think uh, the consideration for moving it along in the process and letting them go to uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals to make their case, and they're going to have to, to, to substantiate that. So I think, you know, and that's what I was hoping that the Planning Commission, and I think you have to, to an extent, provided Jason with some um, more uh, of your perspectives about what you envision for the city. Um, and the things that you prioritize and hopefully, um, you know, they'll understand that and as they go make their materials and their presentation for the ZBA that um, that there's a, a, some effort to think about phasing to think about, um, you know, maybe one building at a time to think about modifying or reducing some of the buildings think about how are we going to handle parking somewhere off site. Um, anything else that we can do or again like we talked about maybe they have a study that says you know what we really don't even need that much parking and that's up to them to prove all that um, and that's their next step i think is to go to the zba and, and try to do those things um, and then hopefully come back um, and we can talk about how to uh, transform that site behind into more parking that might help even um, generate more and better businesses yeah, I think one, one concern I have is Jason Hammond. Um, one concern I have is that if we just do a blanket approval of the site plan as is, then even though the intent is clearly there to, uh, on the owner owner's part, the developer's part, to do, uh, do, do either, either through variances or other improvements or other ideas that maybe we haven't, haven't even thought of yet, um, to, to make the buildings better for the tenants, um, that if those things don't happen for some reason, then it looks like, well, we just rubber stamp this thing. And um, I wanna be mindful of that, that we, I'm not asking for assurances that anything specific will happen, but I would like it to be documented, maybe in the context of some language that goes into an approval of the site plan that we do tonight, that, um, you know, there was intention on both the, uh, the, the side of the city as well as the side of the property owner to uh, work collectively towards addressing some of the challenges that are uh, presented by the properties that may be in conflict with the zoning ordinance. Right, and then I think, um, you know, some of your conditions, it's, it's difficult, I think, for the Planning Commission to put on conditions knowing that their applicant is gonna go to the ZBA. Um, because they may have other conditions or their conditions might conflict with your conditions or be waived by whatever they may or may not grant. Um, but I think certainly some recommendations would be appropriate. Jill, can we uh, request or can I request that the only condition on the approval would be for, uh, and this would be directly for the BZA, which would be that if 
required or requested, there'd be a, there's, a, there's a proposal in for a rezoning. Because if I go to the ZBA meeting, they're gonna say the same thing. What are you doing with the dumpster? Do you need a variance? And I'm gonna tell them the same thing. Well, how, I, don't, I don't know what the planning commission is gonna allow. So I just don't wanna get bounced back and forth. My question is, can we put something in tonight for an approval and then maybe a conditional approval on a rezoning of the residential lot to commercial? So that when I do go to zoning, I can say, look, the planning commission, if, you know, if I can, you know, if, if they're allowing this, then I will bring this dumpster. I don't, I don't need a variance then because now it's on, the dumpster's on a commercial lot, not a residential. And, and now my variance for parking is a little bit less because they gave me a conditional approval on a rezoning. Can we ask for that today so that when I do go to zoning, that the zoning, the, the, the BZA board will know okay, you know, planning commission says that maybe they'll, they'll conditionally rezone this, you know, if I can get certain approvals from the BZA. That way oh. I don't have to come back and ask for it because the zoning, I just, the zoning board's gonna ask the same thing you guys are. Right, and that's, we that's will true. share with them some of the background with this as well. And um, unfortunately we can't do that because we have processes through um, state law where we have to have public hearings on zoning ordinance amendments. And really it's not even a zoning, a rezoning it's to allow parking, it's only parking, um, that's adjacent to a, a building site on Southfield Road. So it's, it's a zoning amendment. Um, if we introduce it next month, Planning Commission has seen it before, um, we can have a uh, public hearing following and then adoption by the end of the year. Yeah, I agree that the zoning amendment route, the text amendment is far quicker and easier mm -hmm. than going through a, a rezoning. A rezoning, as Jill said, requires uh, notice, requires public hearings, postings. Uh, it, it takes action by both planning commission and city council. Uh, that, that process alone is gonna put you back at minimum three months. So um, I, I think the rezoning is probably, or the, the text amendment, which would allow for it under the current zoning is probably the best avenue. Now it would be a special land use. So to have that, I mean, just to further complicate things, the way we had drafted the language initially is that it was a special land use to allow the development of, of that residential property as parking, uh, which makes sense because we're keeping it residential. We wanna make sure that certain standards are met to protect the residents in the neighborhoods while allowing still some of the redevelopment on Southfield Road. Um, does that yeah, allow think, for uh, the dumpster to remain there too? If we we're going to actually fulfill the requirement of the bollards and fix it up and do it, will, will that uh, special use allow that as well? In addition to the parking? I am looking at what we had. I don't think it included the dumpster, but certainly you put the dumpster next to the building and then, you, because then you won't have the issue whether there's parking there or not, right? I, but we can would, figure that out. Yeah. So, I would, I would think there's opportunities to move the dumpster and, and maybe to a more desirable location a, a, at the building where it's appropriate. And mm -hmm. then it's, it becomes less of a complication and less of a concern to, uh, I, I think, an adjacent residential. It might be more popular, you know, more palatable to, uh, to not have the, the dumpster adjacent to them mm -hmm. as, as much as maybe the parking. And I would tend to agree, um, not rezoning, it would probably also um, be more palatable between the two alternatives. Right, and, and I think you, you might remember, and I know we talked about it back in February, and I think we shared it with your architect um, back in the early spring, um, the concept model for that, that showed um, it's more than just paved area that cars can sit on. It, it also included a low screen wall and it included some landscaping, so it, is a, it is an investment into that property. Um, I just want to make that, you know, remind you of that because that is something that um, would be expected. And that's, and, and, you know. and my, my only concern with that is on a special land use, typically mm -hmm. they go away if something changes on the, which is why it's a special land use versus a rezoning. So if you're putting, a, you know, paving those lots is with a screen wall is going to be about $100,000. So if you do that special land use permit, that's what it is, a special land use permit. So if for some reason, you know, it, it, it doesn't run directly, let's say with the land with the zoning, what happens if it goes out of compliance, then the special land use would go away, would it be forced to be removed? I'm, I'm just looking at for an investment like that, 
the better route I know, at least from our zoning attorneys would be get a rezone commercial so that you can pave it there if you're going to put this investment, because then it's a commercial piece of property. If it's a special land use on a residential lot, then unless the restrictions can never revert back to the residential lot, it may be a challenge to get that investment to pave that out. So that's a big risk if for, for any violation or something happens, if the special land use goes away, then, you know, again, that's a problem. If Southfield expands, the building goes empty, uh, you know, and the right of way is taken in the front, and then for whatever reason, you know, there's no occupancy in the building, the special land use typically would go away after a certain number of months, then that means that that back parking lot would revert back to residential. So I just want to make sure that, um, you know, I, I like the fast route, but I want, uh, and, and Charles, you know, to me, I want the, I want the right route. I, I want to make sure long term um, that I'm not just putting a Band-Aid on something that, that is an issue. So as much as I don't want to wait, Scott, for a couple months in, in a rezoning, again, unless the special land use permit could be written in such a way that it couldn't be revoked, it may be a tough investment um, because there's that, that revocation that you could have. But one thing I want to bring up is that uh, even if we decide to try and pursue the idea of rezoning that property, there's no guarantee that that would actually happen. I mean, it could, right? The intention might be there, but maybe we have residents that come to, uh, you know, the public hearings about the, you know, the rezoning uh, proposal and bring up uh, legitimate objections and concerns that need to be considered and that then the rezoning proposal doesn't get approved. Then where are you at? And I mean, I can tell you historically <laughs> that that's what happened. Um, uh, the previous council, probably 2012, maybe 2013, looked at rezoning those uh, first lots in, and it was, uh, it wasn't a different council now, but that council um, ultimately, um, did, chose not to rezone those parcels based on the, the feedback and, out, and output from the residents. So, so that is that is a risk, and that's why we, when we, when Jill and I came up with this other solution, uh, it was it, it didn't involve a rezoning, and, and it, it's a lot easier to convince uh, well seven now, but five at the time planning commissioners to give the special land use for that uh, particular parcel versus. Uh, all the residents that think that we're, uh, it's an attempt to take their property and bulldoze their houses. So, so that, that's why we, we chose that route. Um, but again, it is something that uh, I think, you know, if, if interested, you you make some valid points about the running with the land and uh, versus being a subject to an applicant's uh, individual permit. But uh, I think it's something that, that definitely worth further discussion. Okay, so at this point, um, I guess I'd like to hear some of the opinions from the commission about how they feel, you know, do we have enough information to, to um, make, a, uh, make any um, sort of uh, decision regarding, regarding the uh, status of these uh, uh, site plan approvals? Well, Mark, my, my, my perspective hasn't changed. If we're going to approve the site plan, it still has to have the dumpsters changed and brought up to code. That should still be in the site plan approval. I don't think we should wait because you don't know what's going to happen. And there's still no reason to me why you can't bring them into compliance. I understand all the financial reasons why, but it doesn't change the fact that if it was any other business, we require them to be compliant. So I think if we're going to approve the site plan, it would be with the modification that the dumpsters be in compliance. Okay. Any other ones thoughts? Uh, the only things that are going through my head in addition to what Les just said is just to harken back to, what I was mentioned earlier, which uh, Jill suggested, you know, we submit as kind of recommendations along with a recommendation for approval, right? Because I, just, again, want to reiterate, the Planning Commission can't approve anything, right? All we can do is recommend <laughs> approval to the, plan to the City Council, right? 
Um, so along with our recommendation, any recommendation that we might consider to approve the site plan would include recommendations to um, strongly consider uh, solutions to, uh, uh, you know, work with the property owner on the parking situation, uh, recommendations to work with the property owner on the, um, uh, the, the barrier wall, any barrier wall that might, you know, need to uh, be erected uh, or improved right, in the property line between the, the business property and the residential property, as well as the variances, which we've already discussed. But I, I, I agree with Les, he brings up a very, very good point that, uh, yeah, we understand the, the economic Im impact of having to make a decision about what to do with uh, the dumpster, um, especially given the a little bit of uncertainty about whether it would make you know, you're going to get the opportunity to keep the dumpsters where they're at or an opportunity to uh, move it and reuse the area where they're at uh, for parking. Um, all that being said, it, it still is something that really needs to be just uh, dealt with, right? It cannot be left as is. Okay. I would tend to agree with the dumpster. I mean, to me, you're not going to solve the problem, or or make it too much too much worse as far as getting that into compliance because that's something that you could do. Um, I don't foresee necessarily um, a uh, special land use to uh, accommodate parking on the residential necessarily being as strongly supported. Um, if we allow dumpsters to be, become part of that special land use or that, uh, that, that application. Um, I don't know that we're gonna solve all the issues, um, but if we put together, um, I, guess, I guess part of my question is, is, that's still out there is what is, what is the best path from Jason, what's the best path, uh, not Hammond this time, uh, from your perspective and um, let's formulate a best path from our perspective and, and see where we stand. I would say <clears throat> best path is approval of the existing site plan, sending me to BZA for the variances, Jill and I can chat offline in regards to special land use permit. There's going to be a slew of questions and, and uh, legalese stuff that I'd want to chat with her and have our, our council chat with, with on. Um, we are currently improving the properties day by day, not only with the folks in there, uh, but obviously with the fresh off the, uh, I guess, fresh off the, uh, the uh, conveyor uh, inspection report. And so, um, again, what I'm looking for is the blessing, if you will, on the existing site plan so that we can continue to operate, can't make improvements without having folks paying their bills over there. And as far as the dumpsters, I don't think they're that far out of compliance. Uh, if we have to make improvements where they're at, then they're going to be made where they're at. That solves an immediate issue. I think they're substantially better because the dumpster companies are picking up regularly. Not only that, we've increased our pickup so that there should be no issue of, of uh, debris or trash behind there. Um, and I think uh, once we get the zoning, we get some approvals. You know, uh, as I think everybody said, the properties did not get this way overnight. As much as I'd like to have a, a five or a 10 year plan, you know, we're still peeling back the onion and discovering things that were not discovered before. And some of those, as I've said, are needs to function as a building. We wanna get this back to so that business owners are proud to come in, which they already are, but so that the city can come in and see great units. A lot of folks have put a lot of money into their units that are uh, leasing from us. And so uh, I'd like to get this approved. I'd like to keep the lights on. I'd like to keep the building owner uh, and the, the businesses open and move to the next step of the BZA. And then obviously we can talk next steps. This is the, this is the in compliance with what traditionally should have already been here when we bought the building. It's a little unusual for us to have to go to a planning commission after 
an existing building is purchased, but we understand why. Um, normally I would do that for a new development, but this is an existing building. So this is an extra layer of steps that obviously we want to get to come in compliance with everybody with the city. But the most important, in addition to doing this, is making sure that the building conditions are drastically improved. And then obviously down, down the road, you know, we'll look at the exterior. Jill had recommended some things, but um, it's nice to have a beautiful car, but if there's no engine in it, it doesn't go anywhere. So I need to make sure that um, we can continue to maintain a viable business that can reinvest in itself. And that's what we do. Uh, we are not folks that take the money and go somewhere else. We reinvest in these buildings. We've put a tremendous amount into these buildings already on things that were needed, not necessarily things that I may have wanted. And this is just another layer of registration, of hearings, of drawings, of, of a cost that um, once approved, we can actually start executing. But as you guys are aware, and as I've said, Jason, I know you kind of uh, smiled a little bit. Um, this is a new to me for, for buying an existing building and, and putting together $2,500 architectural plans, you know, per building and going to zoning after and, and on something that was existing non-conforming. And I agree with you. We bought the building. We knew the risk. Um, and so the only relief I'm looking for is, as you have said, as long as there is a mutual understanding of a dual working relationship between us as the property owners and you as the city, in addition to the other city folks, Susie is a great bridge between not only you, the DDA, but also assisting us with the property management division and property inspections with Jim. Um, you know, there's a lot of moving parts and, and some of these changes you guys may not see right out of the gate, but Jim will and the violations list will go down. And these are things that you know, are important to me as we get these buildings either in compliance or variances requested through the help of Jill and the city. That's my best case scenario, that's my goal. And to not lose the folks that are here because we don't want them, not that I don't want them going to Southfield or to Beverly Hills, but I want them in Lathrop Village. That's where I want them. Well, great, we'll just blame Susie. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's on you. <laughs> All right, fine. I'm a, I'm a wonderful speed bump. How's that? <laughs> oh, so what is your pleasure, colleagues? So let me, let me throw this out there and see how you folks respond. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, uh, I propose that we make a recommendation to approve the site plan as it's currently written with recommendations to the city council to consider the variances required for parking uh, and uh, that they um, uh, consider and come to a decision about uh, compliance with, uh, for the dumpster, which would include its location, its screening, and uh, bollards to protect uh, potential collisions with the dumpster. A long proposal. <laughs> as, as, uh, and one last thing, recommendation for <laughs> resolving um, uh, the, uh, or making sure that the, uh, any screen wall uh, required between the property and residential areas um, is in compliance with code, including its materials and size. Uh, Jason Hammond, I just want to clarify. I mean, are you, are, when you say that uh, the ZBA would consider the dumpster locations, are you considering, are you asking them to consider the variance for the location? Sure, or? potentially, right? I mean, it, look, either, either the dumpster is going to be in compliance with the owner ordinance as it currently is, or they will be approving a variance. One of those two things I, needs to be done. Right now, no, I'll, I'll challenge you on the last one. Not challenge, maybe, but 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 paint the picture. The screen wall. When we're talking. You're talking the screen wall for the dumpster. You're talking the screen wall or the screen wall between property. The screen wall between properties. So the screen wall between properties would technically need to exist between the residential and 
the mixed use, which yes. puts it, which, which, which essentially chops the property in, not in half, but divides it as at least two of them. Not so the there need to be a variance also. considered for that as well, right? Or yeah. I, if I might, I, I would say that um, you may want to talk about the screen wall um, after the text amendment. Um, if you know to to allow for the special you know special land use tax money for the parking, um, that may be something that you want to hold off on until after that language you've reviewed so, that language, right? That, that, because then they would be able to, and I I don't have the language in front of me, so um, that may be something that you know have that screen wall if they pursue that route. And I would just say that the, the agreement should be, or the it should be noted in the recommendation that um, uh, the screen wall is not conforming and it is an issue that we agree uh, between us and the property owner to address at a future point. Right, and, and I will say further about the dumpster. I would, I would say it would, it would either, it would, the condition of, a, if you were to approve the site plans, site plans tonight, I would say, the conditions would be that one, they have to, don't forget, they should get the alley encroachment license. If they're planning to use the alley in any way, shape or form, they should have that approval from city council. So I, I think an, a, that should be a condition that they pursue getting that encroachment license and that the, you either place the condition on them to bring the dumpsters into compliance with what is ex, um, with the ordinance now or they can seek a variance for it. I think that would be a cleaner way. No pun right, yeah. intended. Uh, because um, really the, the dumpsters on the two residential lots, that, I mean, they're not, they're not in compliance. Um, the, the one dumpster on the, well, I'll call it the middle property. Um, I mean, that's, it's, it's on a pad and there's grass in front of it. So, you know, those, those garbage trucks are driving on, on the yard. I mean, it's not, it's not. It's, it's not, not paved easy. for access. Right. right. I mean, they weren't, they weren't done properly under the previous prop property owner in the first place. So, um, you know, I, so I would just say that that would be a cleaner way to do it is either put the condition on approval that they bring, bring the dumpsters, into compliance or seek a variance for it. So, my two cents. I I agree with the either or <laughs> option, right? Relative to the dumpster, right? I'm not saying it has to be one way or the other. It just needs to be uh, either brought into compliance or a variance needs to be pursued, and that would be the recommendation. I guess one last thought. You may want to put um, in the effort of. Uh, going with Charles suggestion of establishing a timeline, you may want to, um, you know, recommend a timeline, say, we would like to see the, you know, we would like to have these applicate the applicant make their applications to the ZBA by, you know, I think, like the October or November meeting, you know, and, and, and set targets for them that way. And that may also, you know, that just helps keep us all keep that forward momentum. And, um, you know, make sure that we have milestones that we can all work towards and, and that, you know, just keep it, keep it going. And we might even give them a little bit extra time to make that application if the planning commission wants to address the um, parking in the residential district. Um, that would give Jason a little bit more, um, another option for coming into compliance with the parking. Um, or that's, seeking yeah, that's going to help him with. It's going to help him with his variances as well. Instead of yeah. you know requesting a variance of you know fifty less parking spaces than required, if he has the ability to to make up some of that, you know, it's going to increase right. the likelihood that the ZBA may give him you know the ten space variance that he's now needing instead of you know whatever. Right, it been. and so that can be a, on the list of the other um, alternatives that Jason comes up with for parking for those buildings. Okay, so we're not asking for a, a plan to present, but at least for him to start thinking about it. Well, no, we're asking as him far to make as application to the ZBA and maybe it, we say January of 2021. Okay. 
and that then that app and that would include coming out with a parking layout as part of a solution for for the residential I think that uh, that can be an option I, I don't know that that's necessarily the only option but I do think that um, when going to the ZBA and we, we talked about this from the very beginning um, there needs to be and we just talked about it a little while ago it's more than just saying well, we need a variance of 70 parking spaces the ZBA is going to be really hard-pressed to grant that especially when there's no alternative right so the, the alternative is if people are going to park in the side streets that's not acceptable yeah. to the residents so um, there needs to be some al alternatives so whether it's reducing the, the occupied space in the building whether it's looking at neighboring properties for shared parking agreements whether it's um, you know shifting tenant mixes between the three buildings that there are um, or looking at this other alternative, if that's now gonna be a possibility, then that's a good one. Um, but also uh, there's an expense with that. Um, so we need to be mindful of that also. So, but those are all options that are available. And I think that's a good thing. But, but I think that needs to be presented. And so maybe having this extra time will help Jason put together the best, best, best um, package that he can to the ZBA. Looks like Jason was ready to speak during that. I know his, uh, at least his screen came up. Uh, I noticed the, that too. I noticed yeah. that too. I, I was going like, to oh, Like somebody put the camera on you suddenly. I saw it go down and I thought, uh oh, I didn't say anything. <clears throat> so is there, uh, Jason Hammond, is there a restatement? <laughs> of the motion? Yeah, I was getting oh, to yeah, that. From, it sounds like maybe, yeah. it sounds like maybe you were suggesting um, and I think you probably want to do each one of these site plans individually, the motion, but that it might be something to the effect of pursue the encroachment license for use of the alley, um, either comply with the dumpster requirements or seek a variance for that, seek a variance for the parking and continue to seek parking alternatives and apply to the Zoning Board of Appeals by January 2021. That, did that capture everything that you mentioned, that, Susie? Your what you added, your recommendation. Greenwall, is that in there? That was I think so. I mean, I personally would say apply by December and target the January meeting, but <laughs> that's just me, just me. So, but otherwise, yes. I mean, I think that, that, that captures that. Yeah, I think, you know, by the time we get this moving along, I think, you know, um, if, if there's going to be some alternatives made on the applicant's end, um, that, that having the benefit of knowing what the ordinance was, is gonna look like and having a good feel for whether it'll be approved or not will, be, will make for a better application. Okay, so we'll then we'll entertain a motion based on, are we gonna have to adjust that, Jill, that, that list you just read to us on a project by pro or, a, or a site by site basis? And that's the only question I have before we go. Yes. I'll head with that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> right. All right. So for the initial prop for the first property, which will be. But I do uh, have a question about the screen wall because I really still wasn't clear on what, what you I, all. The, my thinking on the screen wall is it does not need to be addressed immediately but it okay. in the recommendation of city council is that it needs to be uh clear that it needs to be addressed at some point in the future and what needs to be addressed is the materials need to be in compliance with the ordinance and the size needs to be in compliance with the ordinance and the location and the location relative to setbacks and whatnot needs to be Could, in compliance with the ordinance. Is there a way to put or, that or, in? Or a variance. Or a variance, yeah. <laughs> right, either or. Um, well, is there a way to put that in the motion that would say um, that following, perhaps following the applicant's appearance or ZBA application in January, they will be required to uh, address the the screen wall well, following if they that. Do, if they do pursue the um, additional parking in the back, then mm -hmm. the screen wall will be taken care of with that because there's a screen wall requirement as part of that um, ordinance, at least the way we have it written so far. Um, and so 
might be coming on issue. Yeah, I was gonna well, say it's for gonna, two it's of gonna, them. It's gonna make the no third, sense. For the third build one, it's still gonna be in between. an issue. It's gonna make no sense to to build a wall in between with that as a future thing out there. Right. Not only that, it it's it it, it makes the it makes the property even less um, functional, if you will, for all the things we're trying to we're trying to correct. Right. Or and I bring it to yeah. compliance. Um, and I don't know, I know the ZBA can put a timeline on some of the conditions if they choose to do so. Um, it's just a matter of practice, whether they actually do. I know some communities don't do that because they have a, they don't have a mechanism by which to track those things. And I don't know, Scott, if there's ever been a timeline associated with an approval of the ZBA. And I, well, with the ZBA or with the, with the site plan? With the ZBA. I'm try I don't recall us ever doing a time okay. frame on, on a ZBA in Lathrop. They can um, be hard to manage. Yeah, I, I would recommend against the, the, the open-ended and a future date mm -hmm. condition. I think that's yes. just setting the city and, and uh, Jason up for failure. Do you want to um, put any conditions of like a hey, come back and see us in six months just to give us an update or something like that? I, I'm not trying to add more conditions just for giggles. These are things that are just coming up in my brain. I, I would say, I, I would say there's, um, you guys are gonna know whether stuff's getting done or whether it's not. You know, we're, we're under enough pressure to not only deal with the folks that are there, to improve from the contractors and, and from the city department fixing all these problems that have been here and unaddressed. And so my, my thought and one last comment on that screen wall is keep in mind, I've done screen walls my entire career. Right now there's a wood screen wall and there's brush. So I don't wanna have to put anything in there necessarily yet about a screen wall other than we'll look at it or discuss it because no resident wants to be up against a brick wall. That will, uh, and so that's my, again, that's my whole thing with this rezoning of the lot and everything else. It may take months to do that, but I can tell you, even if we did a special land use as an example, and that was the route we went and we had to put up a wall, the tenant, the, the resident who's got the wood fence up there is definitely not going to like or approve a, and I'm looking at it, a contiguous solid face brick masonry with steel pillars constructed wall. That's always the biggest brushback. So as much as nobody wants to have parking up to them, you know, when we talk about the conditions, I'm going to have to go in for a variance on the conditions anyway, because these conditions will never get approved by the resident when they get notice of it. They're going to come to the meeting and say, I don't want to live next to a concrete wall. So I would say that either way, if we're going to do something here, Jason, instead of putting, we'll look at it. I already know I'm going to the BZA. So if we're doing part, I already know I'm going there because the materials here as much as I, I don't like them either, the residents hate them when they're up against their house when they're used to having a painted wood fence like behind these buildings. So I think as long as we leave it open where I can go to the BZA and ask for their uh, graciousness on approvals, I mean, that's enough of conditions. And so my thing is, is let's not, and again, the one thing about us is, you know, when we say we're going to do something, we're going to do it. I know how long this stuff's taking right now with folks coming back. Jill, I appreciate the January date. I was actually looking at probably March only because end of the year is outside work. You're not going to get guys by the time we get approval. If I get an approval in January, you know, it, it may not even get started on outside work until, you know, concrete plants or asphalt plants open. So speaking realistically, you know, we're going to need some very, um, open uh, timelines. I agree we need timelines, Charles, but you know, I, I don't want to start violating, as Scott said, I don't want to be set up or have these businesses set up for failure. I don't want to come back and ask for forgiveness every time you know, we may or may not miss a deadline, especially when it revolves around contractors, construction, and what's going on right now. So it's tough enough to get folks to get stuff done. Um, I just want to make sure that we we can appease and we can we can show consistent improvement versus coming back and asking for forgiveness. So that's my only two cents on the screen wall. I know it's brought up, but I don't want to get too laser focused on it because 
either way we're going to zoning because no resident's yep. going to want a brick wall. I, well, I, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, I'm not trying to nail you down on anything relative to the screen wall other than that it just doesn't fall off the radar. Um, that's the biggest thing. And, uh, but I will tell you that there are other residential properties that abut businesses in the city that have brick walls between them and the businesses. So I granted in this case, there actually is an existing wooden fence and maybe the resident there uh, uh, prefers that, um, but there is precedent in the city for having those uh, barriers being used with brick or other or masonry of some sort. Yeah, and I, I would say living next to uh, a parking lot, I would love a brick wall next to, <laughs> next to my parking lot relative to what I have now. So, um, but yeah, so there's exceptions to every rule, but anyway, just. But, yeah, but the key thing is I'm not trying to nail you down to that. It's just something I want to make sure it doesn't fall off the radar. That's all. Yeah, right. exactly. And, and, I, and I just hope that you guys kind of see that not only business wise, I'm also practical. I just want to make sure that we don't get uproars, you know, in, in addition to the other conditions we have. I just you know, sometimes community uproars are not a good thing either. So I just want to make sure we're doing it. We're doing it satisfactory. We're doing it in a reasonable time period. So, you know, when you're, when you're motioning everything, if you could, all I'd ask is just be a little bit um, uh, looser on timelines. If you are going to put any out there, because it is going to take us some time to turn these things around. That's all I ask. So. Okay. So let's, uh, Let's then go ahead and start the process on um, uh, establishing the motions for approval, starting with the property, the first property, let's start with the south, since that's the order of things. So we have a motion to approve. Or recommend for approval. Recommend for approval. The site plan as presented, conditioned upon, and Jill, I'll help you help me with the formulation here if you could. You're on mute, Jill. The, so this, this is a motion to approve, not a, not a recommendation. Oh, okay. Oh, motion yeah. to approve. Right. Apologize. Um, with the conditions to pursue the encroachment license for use of the alley. Okay. And I think we could do these sort of as one thing, either comply with the zoning ordinance requirements for parking, dumpster enclosures, and the screen wall, or seek applicable variances. Well, I, so to relative to the screen wall, did, I think we just, you know, Jason, we made it really clear, like we don't want to get wrapped around the axle around the screen wall and it's something that might get addressed uh, via, uh, you know, dealing with a, a special land use for the parking anyway, at least on two of the properties. Um, I don't necessarily think it makes sense to include language that says either in compliance with the screen wall uh, ordinance or seeking a variance for the screen wall. I just, it needs to be, the recommendation needs to be uh, include um, looking at <laughs> the, uh, uh, I don't know how to phrase this exactly, but my, th my thinking is uh, considering what's the best solution for a screen wall uh, between residential properties and the, and the, the parcel. Maybe it just gets dropped well, altogether, right? It, it at this may, point. <laughs> and you may just let it continue the way it is. If the, first property to the north would be the only one that would that could potentially if the other two get developed with parking then they there are screen wall requirements that they'll have to comply with um, it'll just be this one on the north end so maybe we do it that way then so that uh, for so that's that's 28820 Southfield that would be the one that doesn't have a uh, the parking in the rear uh, issue right so for, for the other two properties, 27208 and 28600, we don't need to include any language referencing the screen wall because at this point, the plan is to seek a special land use or potentially a zoning ordinance uh, change, which neither of those cases, parking will be there, requires improvement to the screening. But 
do we need a restatement? We're going through a lot of dress rehearsals here, which is good. Yep. <laughs> right. I just want to make sure it's, yeah, it's clearly understood for, <laughs> and I'm not. <laughs> uh, yeah, we need a, a, a planning commissioner, not Jill's, as much right. as she's a part of the team. But, uh, a planning commissioner needs to make the motion and, and, and state the conditions. You started at Jason Hammond. Yeah, but you guys blew up my, anyway. So, all right. <laughs> so let me try this. I'll try and make, uh, I will make a motion to approve the site plan as currently written with conditions that um, the, um, and this is for, in, in the case of properties 27208 Southfield Road and 28600 Southfield Road, um, uh, approval including um, uh, uh, compliance with parking uh, requirements, uh, dumpster uh, ordinance requirements, uh, alley utilization requirements, uh, or approval of city council to use the alley, uh, or to seek variances for those ordinances. Did that capture it? Did I miss anything, Joe? You're on mute, Joe. I think that sounded fine. Okay. I second. Those in favor. Roll, Roll call. call. Roll call. Board member Fobbs. Aye. Board member Hammond. Yes. Board member Julieza. Yes. Board member Cantor. Yes. Chair Piotrowski. Yes. Board member Stansberry. Yes. And board member Thompson. Yes. Motion carry. Then I would like to additionally make a motion to approve the site plan for uh, the parcel at 28820 Southfield Road. Um, uh, also considering uh, compliance with uh, parking requirements, uh, dumpster replacement, um, uh, utilization of the alley or approval from city council to uh, to get that approval to use the alley uh, and um, uh, consider consideration of compliance with screen wall um, ordinances or to seek variances for those. Second. Second. Those in favor? Roll call. Commissioner Hammond? Yes. I'm sorry, board member Julieza? Yes. Board member Cantor? Yes. Chair Piotrowski? Yes. Board member Stansberry? Yes. Board member Thompson? <clears throat> yes. And board member Fobbs? Yes. Motion carried. And excuse me, Mr. Chair, I have a question. Can we vote on these individually? Because we skip, we really didn't skip over, but I don't know if we can combine the 28600 with the 27208. I think we need to vote on those individually. What yeah, would you say? Be, they should be separate motions. Okay. Right. Yeah. So we'll was... go back to B. Fair enough. So I'll make a motion to approve the site plan for uh, the parcel at 28600 Southfield Road. Um, with consideration for coming into compliance with uh, uh, parking ordinances, uh, the dumpster placement ordinances, uh, the alley uh, use and a, uh, approval from city council to use the alley or to seek variances from those ordinances. Second. Those in favor, roll call. Board member Julieza. Yes. Board member Cantor. Yes. Chair Piotrowski? Yes. Board Member Stansberry? Yes. Board Member Thompson? Yes. Board Member Fobbs? Yes. And Board Member Hammond? Yes. Motion carried. Okay. That, uh, 
that done, we can move on to the next item of new business or entertain a motion considering the time. <laughs> <laughs> if any of these items would like to be put off for another for another meeting session, we have the sign ordinance discussion. We have the zoning discussion on cannabis. We have a motion uh, to table either how, of those. How two. pressing are these two? I was new just going to say that the okay. sign ordinance discussion is um, nothing. It's really just there for your information and your uh, requested by council to provide some feedback that doesn't necessarily have to happen today. Um, I did put a cover memo with it. And so the changes are, I think, hopefully fairly clear. Um, the zoning discussion on cannabis is an introductory discussion. I think it is, um, you know, at this point, it's still just sort of up for, uh, this is background information. Um, I, I think it would be worth having that conversation when you're fresh. So uh, I know there's a timeline associated with this. Um, and so I'll leave that one up to you. The comprehensive plan, I had a couple of things to review with you, um, but I know it's we're at two, our two hour limit almost. And I know sometimes it's hard, especially after being probably on Zooming all day as well. Um, so whichever approach you like, nothing is critical, um, except of those three, well, I mean, they're all kind of, they all need to be addressed yeah, sooner rather than later, is what I would say. I'll say, let's not put them off indefinitely, but right. one of the things if we, if uh, commission does decide to table these to the next agenda would be for planning commissioners to start, uh, go through the, the memo that Jill put together with respect to the cannabis and start to think of, of issues or, or concerns that you might have that you want to see incorporated because uh, City Council really wants to keep our foot on the gas with respect to this in terms of developing uh, not only the zoning ordinance, but the um, procedures for application, the criteria for application. So these are, these are things that uh, Jill and I are going to be working on. We are requesting feedback from, we've requested feedback already from City Council. We're, we're requesting feedback from the Planning Commission as, as far as issues that you, you're anticipating your, that uh, that we're going to come across when we start to get applicants. So um, examples that have come up is, uh, you know, proximity to schools, parks, churches, um, residential property, kind of hard to do with our commercial <laughs> corridor, but things like that, um, odor, um, time, parking, traffic, th those types of things, things that, that you want to say, hey, make sure you guys think about this and you know, this could be a really big problem for us in our community. Um, don't don't draft an ordinance that doesn't address that. So those are the things that we're asking for your input initially. So if, if you have things that come up or, or you have already thought of, uh, email myself, email Jill those. Mm -hmm. That way we, we can start working on that um, without having to go through the full thing tonight. Right. And we do, I know the packet was long and those three um, items were pretty substantial. Um, but the last couple of pages of the packet were about the cannabis and sort of outlined some of those issues that you might want to think about. Um, and then we can send out the information that we didn't have a chance to review with you today for the comprehensive plan. And then we can have a more robust discussion on that next month, along with parking. Okay. So if I not hearing any feedback. Well, haven't heard any feedback saying, no, let's charge ahead with these items. Um, we have a motion to, uh, to, to table sign ordinance discussion. We've got to take these individually too, I suppose. So, or would we like to dive into that right now? I'd make a motion that we table it to the next agenda. The sign ordinance uh, discussion. Second. Those in favor, roll call. Oh, for one second. Sorry, everybody, my papers, I doing some shuffling. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. 
Board Member Cantor? Yes. I'm sorry? Yes. Oh, thank you. Chair Piotrowski? Yes. Board Member Stansberry? Yes. Board Member Thompson? Yes. Board Member Fobbs? Yes. Board Member Hammond? Yes. And Board Member Julieza? You're on mute, Charles. Oh, you're mute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Sorry. 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 Motion carried to table this item. Okay. Zoning discussion. Cannabis. I'll make a, I'll make a motion to uh, table the zoning discussion on cannabis. Second. Those in favor? Roll call. Chair Piotrowski? Yes. Board member Stansberry? Yes. Board member Thompson? Yes. Board member Fobbs? Yes. Board member Hammond? Yes. Board member Huyeza? Yes. And board member Cantor? Yes. Motion carried to table this item. I assume that the answer to uh, other matters for, uh, oh, sorry, uh, update business table, uh, yeah, tabled items. Comprehensive plan update. We have a motion to table that as well or entertain. Uh, what do you think, Jill? How much time do you need to discuss the comprehensive plan update and do we need to move that forward today? It's kind of like, it's how much time do you want to put to it? I mean, I would, I would say that it would be good. We would probably need a good half hour to talk about what I have. And so me, no, I mean, it's up to you. I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna I can't even ask. see less. Of, I, all I can see is the top of his head. So I don't know. Really <laughs> he's thinking. He's thinking. <laughs> yeah, he just, does, 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 right here. <laughs> does it make sense to have an interim meeting between next month? I mean, because it sounds like we still have a lot of stuff, and who knows what's going to happen for the for the next month's meeting. I mean, maybe in two weeks have another, you know, have another meeting. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> just they just charge it ahead. <laughs> I'd say look at a calendar and see if I've, uh, yeah. Two weeks no, would be I, the twenty ninth. It is the I, fifth Tuesday, so technically there's nothing going on, but I'd say charge ahead if it's another meeting or charge ahead for half an hour charge ahead but that's your decision yeah and and i know i'm sorry mr chair i usually don't weigh in on anything that you guys have to say but in two weeks i'm going to be up to here with distributing ballots so there might be an election uh, coming up uh, yeah. uh, be kind to our so. clerk is what we're Please. hearing be kind to our clerk <laughs> Please. We can right. send, we have, right, we I have information that I can send to you and I can try to, um, I think with Susie and Sri's help, I think we can better put uh, some directions with the stuff that we send you. I mean, you, you've, you'll have the sign ordinance so that you've got a whole month to look at. Um, you have the cannabis discussions. You've got a whole month to look at that. We'll get you what we have for the comprehensive plan. We're actually probably add some more stuff to it. And then we'll, what we'll try to do is give you really specific questions to try to facilitate our discussion so that they're much more efficient. Um, and we can get through these items, even though we have a lot to talk about. We can also we add a study session to next meeting to discuss the sign ordinance and cannabis since they're not yeah. action items. Yeah, that's a good idea. To do it like before the formal meeting. Yeah. Yeah. You used to schedule them at six instead of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That sounds okay to me. I mean, look, the comprehensive plan up, uh, does need to get updated, right? And we do need to talk about it so that we can get to a point where it can actually be ratified, right? So like, we can't like let that sit around for too long. Progress needs to be made. Normally on it gets taken care of plan. in the year you start exploring it. <laughs> We're we trying to prevent that from August. happening. <laughs> we started in August, so. Oh. We're trying to get ahead of it, right? That's the whole point. <laughs> we don't want to give up the road that we gained on that one. Um, 
Okay, uh, I guess I will make a motion to table the comprehensive plan update discussion, but with the understanding that we're going to get additional details and pointed questions from the planners. Mm -hmm. Second. Those in favor, roll call. Roll call. Board Member Stansberry? Yes. Board Member Thompson? Yes. Board Member Fobbs? Yes. Board Member Hammond? Yes. Board Member Julienza? Yes. Board Member Cantor? Yes. And Chair Piotrowski? Yes. Motion carried. <clears throat> Hey, I won't skip over other matters for discussion, but I assume that there's going to be none. True. Well, do you want to officially uh, schedule that study session before our meeting on October 20th? And if so, do you just want to say like six o'clock? Sure, that's fine with me. Yes. Okay. Sure. Yes. Even though that's my birthday. <gasps> oh, happy early birthday. Who's bringing cake? <laughs> Don't bring cupcakes. Everybody bring your own. <laughs> we'll drop something off to your house, Mark. <laughs> we know where you live. Yeah. We know where you live. <laughs> okay. Uh, general communication and correspondence. Legal update. I had a 45 minute update prepared, but I'll save it for next time. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. Planning update. You got all mine. Okay, staff update. Yep, you guys all need to sign up for our, our fall corridor cleanup. Jason, I'm looking right at you. Um, last two, um, September 26th, uh, Saturday, September 26th. <laughs> Nine, <laughs> 9 to 11 a.m. Um, it it should be pretty quick. We're going to focus on the south end. Um, I sent a registration link out. I'll send it again. Bring a friend. And that's bring all family I'm going to ask you guys about. What's that? I said bring family members. Friends, family. Yeah, I guess they don't have to be your friends. They could be your family, too. And that's it. That's all I got. Okay. Cool. Yeah, quick thing. Awesome. Just, 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 wanted, just wanted to mention and, and remind uh, everybody that there's uh, a proposal on the ballot uh, for the upcoming election for roads and ditches. Um, we've done some things to get education and information out there. Uh, the fixlvroads.com website uh, has been updated with the new proposal information, so I encourage everybody to go out there and look at it, tell your friends. Um, we're going to send a postcard out to all residents like we did last year, uh, directing them to that site. And we have scheduled four uh, town hall uh, to, to allow people to give people an opportunity to ask questions and, uh, you know, get more information about the, the proposal. The actual dates and times are on the uh, fix LV roads website as well as the city website uh, where you can also find information on the city website as well and then just just to throw it out there the the first um, town hall I believe is on, on uh, Sunday October 4th at 3 p.m. and, it, and they'll, they'll all be virtual it's uh, yeah it's Sunday October 4th at 3 p.m. that's correct And there'll be one proposal on the ballot, right? One proposal. Uh, it's basically to do about uh, 7.1 miles of road um, in the city. Uh, it's 3.9176 mills, I believe, uh, for, for 10 years. So about, I, I, I think it works out. I, I haven't looked at this stuff in two weeks, but I, I believe it works out to about $262 per year uh, for 10 years for the average uh, homeowner in Lathrop. And the average homeowner in Lathrop has a taxable value of about $67,000.
you nailed it. All those. I was gonna say, are, and I've just been paying more for more than that for parking for a month that I haven't been using. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, Jason, those numbers are all burned in my head, but I haven't accessed those spaces in a while. Yeah, I was looking at numbers on the screen, and you nailed every single one of them. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There also is a the cost estimator. I was looking for this earlier. The, the cost yeah, estimator the, is still the cost there. estimator. The cost estimator is out there, like we had last year. So you can just you know go to a map, click on your home, and it'll tell you the current taxable value, and then what this proposal would 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 cost you. So it's a, it's a much more scaled back proposal mm -hmm. than last time. I mean, last time we were doing all 26 miles of 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 local road, we dropped it back to 7.1 miles, and I believe last time it was. 21 million. It's down down to 5.85 million, uh, and it was 8.3 mils, and now it's down to 3. Point, uh, like I said, 9, 9176. Yep. Okay, we can uh, we can uh, get more of that out of the town hall, and so let's move on to adjournment. May like to make a motion to adjourn this meeting. Second. All those in favor. Yes. Aye. <laughs> here, here. Thank you. Hi. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Thank you for Bye. your endurance. Thank you. Yeah. Good night. Bye.